guys! My name is Chelsea Adler and welcome to my channel. In this video, V and I are going to be comparing the two major actuarial societies that exist in the United States, the Society of Actuaries, or the SOA, and the Casualty Actuarial Society, or the CAS. When I was in college, I had no idea that there was more than one actuarial society. In fact, I sort of ended up going the CAS route pretty much by accident when my first job out of college was in a PNC space. Looking back, I really wish I had known that there were two different societies or, or more, multiple different societies and done some research and understood better the opportunities that I could pursue with each one of them. That's why V and I decided to team up and compare and contrast the CAS and the SOA. This is info we wish we had when we were starting off our careers. And we hope it's helpful to you as you begin or continue along your journey. Hi everyone. It is my pleasure to collaborate with Chelsea on this topic. Uh, so my name is V. I am a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and also a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries because I'm currently working in Canada. So I also have a YouTube channel called V Live Journal. So I make content regarding the actual profession, uh, career planning in general, as well as a lot of uh, productivity and lifestyle tips. Uh, so unlike Chelsea, I was aware of the two societies uh, and the societal actuaries uh, stood out for me because they offer more track like uh, finance and investment. So I was never really interested in the traditional actual topics like contingency. So the options to pursue uh, corporate finance and enterprise risk management or investment was much more appealing to me. And also, I had my first job in a life insurance company, uh, so that sealed the deal for me and I continue to pursue my exams with the Society of Actuaries and I have been with the current company for over 10 years now. To start off this two-part series, V and I will be covering the path to becoming an actuary in this video. Then, in part two, which will be featured on V's channel, we'll be touching on where actuaries work, salaries, and some considerations for choosing one society over the other. The process to become a credentialed actuary starts off the same between the two societies. Both the CAS and the SOA require actuaries to take Exam 1, Probability, and Exam 2, Financial Mathematics, in addition to satisfying educational requirements for accounting and finance, plus economics. From there, the paths diverge. One major difference between the societies is that the path to becoming a fellow with the CAS is the same for everyone, whereas SOA actuaries have the opportunity to pick an educational pathway and take exams that focus on those specific topics. There's no set order for taking exams, but most candidates do follow the progression outlined on the CAS website, which I'll walk through now. Also, it's important to point out that the CAS is currently revamping the requirements for fellowship. So it's possible some of these exams may change or look different in the future. For this video, I'll focus on what the path to earning your FCAS looks like now, and in a future video, I'll dive more into the specifics of the Admissions Transformation Plan, or ATP, so you have a greater insight into what to expect going forward. After the initial requirements that overlap with the SOA, actuaries need to take and pass three online courses. These exams are a bit shorter than the others and are offered by the Institutes, which is an organization that does testing for other insurance credentials, such as CPCU, CLU, and CHFC. The first two focus on risk management and insurance operations, plus insurance accounting, coverages, insurance law, and regulation. The third online course is new, and as of the date of this recording, details have not yet been shared on what it will cover. After you've passed exams 1 and 2, attained all of your VEEs, or validation by educational experience, and passed the online courses, you are considered to have satisfied the foundational educational requirements. Next up, actuaries take Modern Actuarial Statistics Parts 1 and 2, also known as MAS-1 and MAS-2. In addition to statistics, these exams cover concepts such as probability and linear models, credibility, Bayesian analysis, and Markov chains. Next, 
Exams five and six start to dive deeper into concepts that are directly applicable to day-to-day -day work as an actuary. Exam five focuses on basic techniques for rate making and estimating claim liabilities. Exam six focuses on regulation and financial reporting. And I can say that I personally use both of these exams fairly regularly in my day-to-day -day work. After completing all of these exams, online courses, and VEEs, the last step to earning your associate with the CAS is the course on professionalism, which can now be taken in person and virtually. The purpose of the COP is to make candidates aware of professionalism standards and requirements of various actuarial societies. And finally, to become a fellow, you must pass the three upper level exams. Exam seven focuses on estimating policy liabilities, insurance company valuation, and ERM, or Enterprise Risk Management. Exam eight is on advanced rate making techniques, and exam nine is on financial risk and rate of return. So now let me talk about the education system through the Society of Actuaries. And similarly to the casualty actual societies, uh, we also have different levels, the associate level as well as a fellowship level. So first, the society of actuaries, you can find the education pathways on its website. Uh, and let's explore the different pathway to an SOA designation. Uh, so we actually have two types of associate in a way. You have the associate of the society actually, so an ASA, or you can also uh, get a charter enterprise risk analyst, which is equivalent as an associate level. And, uh, and then you can continue exam and uh, become a fellow of the Society of Actuaries. So let's talk about the requirements in order to become uh, an associate uh, for the ASA. So the SOA is also going through different education um, exam change, uh, education changes. Last year, they also introduced micro-credentials uh, because, uh, to be honest, in order to become an associate level, there are a lot of different requirements. So in a way, uh, getting these micro-credentials, uh, uh, which introduce kind of like a, a smaller milestone on your path uh, to get an associate level. And I consider these as a celebration milestone, which can be a source of motivation and also recognition uh, to your employers or your current or future employers that you can demonstrate. Um, and, uh, and also if you decide to stop at one point, now you actually get some uh, credential um, with your effort. So the three, uh, the three micro credential that they introduce include, so first is the free actuarial foundations, then the actual science foundation, and then the data science for actuaries. So the free actual foundation include the overlap requirements with the CAS, like ISMP and FM, uh, the VE economics, the VE accounting, uh, and finance, plus an e-learning e course for free actuarial foundations. Uh, and then uh, the actual science foundation um, is include everything from the pre actual foundations plus two more exams. So the fundamental of actuarial mathematics and statistics for risk modeling plus VEE in mathematical statistics and an e-learning course for actual science foundation. Then for the data science for actuaries, uh, it offers, uh, it include only has two exams, statistics for risk modeling and predictive analytics and e-course for advanced topics in predictive uh, analytics. Uh, so back then when I was studying for the SOA, we didn't have these exam yes, like the statistic for risk modeling or pre predictive analytics. So in a way, let's say if, if I want to get into data science a little bit more, I want to demonstrate uh, my knowledge in that a little bit or get more formal education on this, I could on, I can also take this uh, data science for actuaries uh, micro credential as well. Then to get the ASA, you will need all of the requirements uh, above plus a sixth exam that you can choose, like either the advanced long-term actuarial mathematics or the advanced short-term actuarial mathematics and a fourth e-course in fundamental of actuarial practice, so the FAP. 
And uh, lastly, you will need to attain a seminar, uh, associateship, professionalism course to go through professionalism, ethics and legal liability and more that actually need to adhere to. So you will get introduced to the code of conduct uh, because at the end of the day, the actual profession, uh, we are professionals and we have ethics and code of conduct to adhere to. So in order to get uh, the SERA, uh, then you do need to have three VE credits, uh, six exam, two courses, and an APC seminar. Uh, so it's, it has similar workload like an S, uh, ASA, but with uh, a few different uh, exams and modules. And that's why I say uh, Sarah can consider uh, as an associateship level. So unlike the CAS where they only had one, uh, one track uh, to get the fellowship. Uh, the SOA has uh, as many as six different specialty tracks to attain a SOA fellowship. You can either go for the corporate finance and ERM, the quantitative finance and investment, uh, individual life insurance and annuities, retirement benefits, uh, group and health insurance, and general insurance. I'm not going to go into the details of all the requirements, but in general, each uh, for each track, uh, you will need to have uh, to write around three exams, uh, three modules, uh, and the FAC. Uh, so, and the exam can range from two to five hours. Except for the general insurance track, where you have to write uh, four exams in total, and then you also need to do the DMAC, uh, which is a decision uh, making and communication module focus on written and oral communication skills and decision making skill as applying to uh, solving business problem. So it really helps you to develop your soft skill further, uh, which is greatly important in, uh, in this career or any career in general. And if you follow the corporate the finance and ER, ERM track, uh, you see you would automatically uh, get the Sarah as well, uh, which I did. So in general, it takes about four to six years to get your associate uh, level and then add on another two to four years to get to the fellowship level. Uh, as of December 2020, the society actuaries have about 60% uh, uh, of the memberships are at the fellow level and then 40% are at the associate level. So to earn and maintain uh, all of these designations, so besides passing exam, uh, there are other requirements like uh, professionalism workshop and continuing education uh, development uh, for, for you that you need to file uh, years and years and years after to actually uh, get your designation in order to keep them. So I would say the education system constantly changes with the evolution of the actual profession. Uh, so overall, the goal is really to help actuaries and experienced actuary uh, get up to date with new knowledge and uh, make sure that the actuaries uh, continue to be relevant uh, to uh, not just the insurance industry, but many more uh, financial related in uh, industry as well. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and comment below. It'll increase the chances that others will be able to find and benefit from this information. And as V mentioned, part two will be on her channel, which I will link below. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on new videos when they're released. We would love to hear from you. So if you have questions or suggestions for future topics, please let us know. You can put them down in the comments below or email us directly. Thank you so much for watching.